Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we have a top 10 for you. This is our top 10 games we want to play with our families, but we haven't. Yeah, this is a fantastic time of year to be playing games with your families, uh, and we have been slowly introducing uh, games to our, our families for, for a while now, yeah. and we we're going to keep on doing it. These are <laughs> ones that we think would work on some level, yes. but for one reason or another, we have not yet brought it to their attention. Maybe it's something that, uh, there's some kind of hurdle, right? Something stopping yes. us from doing it, whether it's time constraints or money or whatever the case is. We're going to go through all those. Uh, and uh, So yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys too. What games are you playing with your families this holiday season? What are ones that you'd like to play but just haven't yet for some reason? What's holding you back? We want to hear from you guys too so we can have some good ideas as well. All right. Ready to kick us off? Let's do it. All right, so the number one game, number sorry, number 10 game <laughs> we want to talk about, this is a game called Wavelength. This is a fantastic party so game. So good. It's very, very accessible. Also, what has to happening is you're given a spectrum, something for between, let's say, just really easily from hot to cold. Uh, usually, they're much more nuanced and interesting. We, we had one that, before that was um, from commerce to art, which is yeah. a very unique, interesting spectrum. And then you have a random uh, result somewhere in that spectrum, you, you have to come up with a clue that matches that you know, where you are on that yeah. spectrum. And uh, you have to give a clue matching that. Everyone has a great debate about it. And then ultimately they make a choice whether they think that you, where, you know, where if they can try to match up to you. Now, the reason we have not introduced this to our families yet is... It's like a really difficult game. No, that's not why. <laughs> we just don't own it. <laughs> we yes. play this every year at one of our gaming conventions uh, and have a fantastic time doing it. We've, there's even an app that we've we downloaded and tried playing with our family online. Um, but yeah, we just have not, uh, we don't physically own this game, so we have not been able to bring it around to the holidays or anything like that. So yeah. if we ever get our hands on it, this is definitely like a instant. It's definitely going to be at the next family gathering. Boot it off the list yes. instantly because we're bringing it over right yes. away. <laughs> All right. Our number nine is Horrified. So this is a cooperative game where you are going around and you're trying to defeat all these different monsters. Um, and you all have different abilities as you're trying to defeat, depending on how difficult you make it, three to five, right? It's three to five monsters. Yes. Yes. Unless you get... Two to four. The bride, the bride, and all of that, and then oh my gosh, it's just so freaking difficult. But anyway, the reason why I, I think this would really work because I think cooperative games work really well when you're trying to introduce new mechanisms to people. Because when you're all on the same page, it kind of helps the learning because you're not being competitive with each other. I feel like the different um, ways that you have to defeat the different things could be confusing. The fact that there's not this one way to win, that you have to do these four different things or these two different things or these three different things in order to win. And I feel like that might be, right now, it might be just one step too much. Yeah, like the idea of Pandemic, I think, was really attractive as a game, but yeah. thematically, maybe it wasn't the most, you know, <laughs> what <laughs> yeah. anybody wanted to talk about, was having to be, have the weight of the world on your shoulders as you're trying to save yes. the world in the middle yeah. of this pandemic. Uh, was, so, so it was a great game, but this would be a great, you know, version of that, except for what you just mentioned, the different, the changing wind conditions. Yeah. All right, so the number eight game we want to talk about, this is a game called Word on the Street. Uh, this is a really neat kind of a party style game where you're given a word, you're given a, a category. You have to yeah. come up with a word um, that uses as many letters as possible. What you're trying to do ultimately is kind of shift letters off of the board to in your favor. Um, so if you're says something like, uh, game name a genre of movie, and you said horror. You get to move the H over, and you get to move the R over. You know, three spots because there's three yeah. R's in horror. It doesn't include vowels or like the any of the, like the really kind of odd letters like Z's and J's and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just a, it's a really fun game for that reason. Yeah, it's and, zoomable. And it is zoomable. We did to kind of test that out as kind of a, over the past couple of years. Got some opportunities to play this over over you know Zoom and video calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason why this isn't necessarily a game that we would introduce to our families is, I think there's a, a, a idea in your family that spelling. I am this person. Yes. Bethany's included in this, <laughs> yes. by the way. That, that spelling is 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 is, is challenging and uh, it would real take time a, like real time learn like doing that like just stresses. <laughs> so Bethany's overcome that, but at the same time, yeah. there's there's this idea that maybe uh, having to come up with an accurately spelled word yeah. um, on the spot within 30 seconds with this little timer would be would be challenging. Uh, so might take the fun out of it. At yeah. First. So this yeah. is what I'd like I'd love to see that kind of social experiment take place, but at the same time, we maybe want to tread lightly so we don't like make anybody upset. Want yeah. everybody to have a good time. 
Um, our number seven. We're already on seven. We're cruising through this Jeez. list. Our number seven is Pitch Car. This is a wonderful dexterity game. You literally have these little um, round discs that you're flicking on a racetrack, and you're trying to be the first one to do the race um, three times. It is. It is wonderful. It is so much fun. It is hilarious. The only issue would be is that you need a lot of space to be able to walk around. You and it has to be a complete. The surface has to be completely flat. Yes, completely completely flat for it to work because you're adding when you're building the racetrack it's different parts that you're putting together so if it's not flat it's gonna bow and then it's gonna be a bit harder to to flick your disc and you need a lot of space to be able to walk around you need to be able to walk around and be able to move around the entire table to get to any angle that you want and since there's just a lot of us Sometimes that space isn't available. I mean, in our gaming room, totally fine. You know, we can make space for that. That's what it's designed for. <laughs> but in somebody else's house, it, it's not designed for our gaming situation. <laughs> right. I do think that this would be um, absolutely hilarious with my family, though. I think they would get a huge kick out of it. Yeah. All right, the number six game we're going to talk about is Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Uh, Between Two Cities is a, is a wonderful game, but... Those two games are pretty similar. Yeah. Um, it has the idea of everyone sits in a big circle and you're creating a structure with the person on your right and the person on your left. So between the two of you, you're working together to make two separate structures. But whatever of them scores the least amount of points is your actual end game score. So you have to kind of work them up equally so that way yeah. uh, you're not like, if you have a score 105, Guess what? Your score is actually five. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you can get them both to 80 or whatever the case is. You know, I'm just making up numbers. Uh, but that would be ideal. Um, so I think that uh, we personally preferred um, between two castles of Mackin Ludwig more. Yeah. But because it's a little more complicated. So we so got we, rid of the other. We got rid of between two cities. Yeah. But now, trying to introduce it to family, uh, it's like a, it's a little bit more going on. There's a little bit more nuance to it, a little bit more... Yeah. Things. You know, it's nice because you can be working with the person next to you. You can kind of strategize a little bit and kind of take some sides, whispering to each other. But not everyone's going to be sitting necessarily next to one of us or someone who's familiar with the game yeah. enough to be able to coach them through it. Um, and then you might have some very, very sc score, unbalanced, unbalanced yeah. scores and things like that. So for that reason, have not brought this one over to the family yet. But uh, what a great game. What a cool system. Uh, between two cities and between two castles of Mackie and Ludwig. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, our number five is Mountains, and this is a game where you're literally going on hikes up a mountain, but you need certain items to go on there. So you're deciding how difficult the track is that you're going on. You flip a card over, and you have to decide if you have all the things that you need. Now, every single player has an individual hand of items that they personally have, and you're not going to have everything that you need for all of your hikes. So you can ask people if they have an item. Now, if you pay them and you ask them if they have it, they lay it down in front of them, and then you are borrowing it. It goes back into their hand afterwards. It's, just, it's basically a memorization game to remember what everybody has, so as the hikes get more and more difficult, you know who has what, but you also need the cubes to pay people for it, so you kind of also need to be able to have that, so you can borrow all the stuff. And this is a really simple reason why we haven't brought it over. We just haven't. This isn't one of the ones that has a hurdle. We just have so many like party games that we need to push on my family whenever we go over there that those are always a priority to get those played, to get those played a lot and at a higher number count. That even though I feel like this would work really well, it's just like when we think about the games that we want to bring or kind of sometimes just have to bring, it always gets pushed to the side. This is like one we'll that... take it out, but then we just like don't bring it. <laughs> this is one that I think would be great if we just like schedule the set aside time yes, like to, to play yeah. with your parents. Or with the you know, uh, you know some of your siblings and stuff like that. I think that would be fantastic to set aside time for it, as opposed yes. to a bigger gathering. Yes. All right. So the next one I want to talk about this is Seven Wonders. Uh, Seven Wonders is such a great game. It's a classic, practically not practically. It is at this point. Yes. Um, it's a, it handles large groups of numbers. Large groups of players. <laughs> <laughs> players are people, not numbers. Players. Players are people. Hashtag players are people. Players peoples. are people. <laughs> players are meeples. That's going to be like the first like shirt we ever get are players are people. <laughs> like protesting. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. We're not board numbers, we're people. <laughs> it's Ryan Bethany Board Game Reviews. Players are people. <laughs> This is this game, it's a card drafting game. You take one card, pass the rest. Take one card, pass the rest. Something like that. It's very, very simple. Uh, it plays a large number of 
players, uh, and uh, the scoring is is kind of interesting, and it's not super super hard. You get the you know these wreath symbols. A lot of cards will just simply have you know five wreaths on it, so you use five points. Yeah. Other things have like a multiplier effect on them. The more you have of them, the more points you're going to get. So the scoring is not even that bad. What where this game really gets to where it's challenging to bring over to non-gamers is the symbology. Yes. There's so many symbols in this game. Uh, my goodness, there's every little effect and cool little special ability has its own symbol. A lot of them are pretty similar too, so you have to kind of know the game and be gamers to kind of to grasp that. That being said, I've uh, seen some really great player aids online, so I'm thinking about printing those out, laminating those, and putting those in the box. That way, when we do bring it around, we can introduce the symbols, and there everyone has a reference right there. As it is now, it's just like the rule books we have, like. With all the expansions, it was like, oh gosh, a half dozen rule books. You have to flip through and like, where's that symbol? Let me see. Oh, where's that rule book that matches that symbol? And yeah. it gets to be a huge mess. So I think that the base game, boiled down, would be perfect for for family setting. Um, just the, the symbols scare me a little bit. Yeah, just, scare me. It scares <laughs> yes, me for yes. them. <laughs> scares you to teach. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our number three is Gravwell, and this is a space game where you're trying to be the first one to get off of this track, and you're moving. What, wherever an item is, the gravitational towards that is actually how you're moving, whether you're moving towards or away from it. But sometimes what's happening is other things will change the board. So you thought you were going to move away from it, but because of how everything shifted on the board, you're actually moving towards it. So you're not actually getting further away or escaping in any way. And it just changes like that all the time. I think it is chaotic and hilarious, like because it's just... As long as you're you're able to just roll with it all the time and you're not going to be upset and you're just here for the chaotic fun that Gravwell is, it's great. I feel like, even though I feel like our families would get a kick out of that and doing that. They the would fact, love watching everyone else's yes, plans fall yes, apart, yes, the but lack, they would not be able to handle their own. <laughs> yes, the lack of control can be an issue in this game. And even though, like, like Ryan said, I feel like... It would be hilarious for them to watch all of that, and then when it came to them, then they'd be mad at somebody. <laughs> or, or the game itself. Like, oh, yes. this, this game's stupid. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I still kind of want to test it out because, like, I, I, it is just chaotic and hilarious how you're moving around and you're trying. And there is some strategy. It's not just, like, a free-for-all. There is some strategy. You can try to guess because there's a player A that lets, has, um, lets you know the probability of things, like the letters and, and the cards and what they do. So there, there is some information that you're allotted in it. Um, um, but it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the number two game I want to talk about, this is Campaign Trail. Uh, this is basically a uh, abstraction and a, a gamification of the United States um, Electoral College, voting for the yeah. President of the United States. And it is such a fantastic game. You literally have these long bars that represent uh, the various states and how many electoral votes they have. And so as you kind of have this area majority, area control thing going on, the states are going to flip. So let's say you're the Libertarian Party and you have the most votes over here, but then all of a sudden the Democratic Party is able to get more votes in that category. It's going to swing over to them. And yeah. all these states are kind of shifting throughout the game. There's just thematically and mechanically, everything matches up brilliantly absolutely brilliantly and for that reason even though this is a, 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 a I wouldn't call it heavy but it's even though it is a more thematic a strategic game I think I would have zero problem teaching anyone in our families because the mechanics and the theme match so well. Yeah. They're married to each other. Everything just makes sense trying to, all the mudslinging you can do and the politicking yeah. you can do and raising funds and all this stuff it just makes perfect sense. However. This is a long one. Very long. You're in for the long <laughs> haul with this one. This is probably a two to three hour game. Yes. And that is not what non-gamers have signed up for, you know? Yeah, or even when you're heading over to a family gathering, you don't want to be the person that has everybody for that length of time when you're just gathering together for, like, a birthday party or a get-together. You don't want to be like, okay, now that we all want to hang out, interact with each other, well, you Just three walk hours. off the next three hours, <laughs> it's, it's ours now. I know you were only planning on stopping by for, like, 45 minutes, but now you're here for the whole afternoon. <laughs> well, then, uh, as, as you're playing, too, you'd have the issue of people who are just going to stop by. Yes. You, when they yeah. stop by, you want to... 
want to stop what you're doing and interact with them for that short time that they're there. But then that makes the three-hour game become three and a half. And then the next person stops over and interrupts, and you want to stop and talk to them. Yeah. Oh, then that three and a half became four. And now you're talking about an all-day game because you want to make sure you yeah. chat with everybody. And now you're staying the night. And now you're staying the night. You know, actually, this sounds like a pretty good plan. <laughs> <laughs> I take it off. We're, I'm bringing this to Christmas. That's all there is to it. So, yeah, that's the, the, the real time constraint is is time. That's yeah. the real thing here. So we're going to, if we brought this over, this would be something we'd have to, again, block off. And it's great, especially around, you know, pre-election time. You know, it'd be great to, it's super educational. Yeah. It's about politics without being political. 100%. Oh my gosh. It's so great at if that. If you are worried about, like, bringing out a game like this and having it be like, well, you know, that crazy uncle Fill in who's, blank. Uh, Fill in know, blank. Yeah. It doesn't have that. It's completely abstracted to where it's just simply about the process of electing yeah. instead of the, um... The ideology poly- behind it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, Campaign Trail, really cool game, great choice, very easy to learn and teach. It's a long one. All right. We are here. We have arrived. We're at our number one game. And the reason why this is in the very top spot is because this is the game that inspired the list. This is the game that I've talked about multiple times about needing to bring over and specifically playing with my dad. And that is Ghost of Christmas. And the reason why um, this one... It, it would work with families who are familiar with trick-taking because it's a trick-taking game. So you're playing all these tricks, but you're not necessarily scoring them because you're scoring them in the past, present, and future. So it can be weird with you do this, but then you do this, but that affects this. But you don't play them in that order. You can play them in any order. So I feel like this is one that specifically with my dad would work really well, but it's just like a little step extra. But since he's familiar with trick-taking... I think it would work. The games like Spades, Euchre, you know, those have yes. weird, goofy rules. They have no weird, doubt goofy about rules. it. But the, to be, because they're so familiar, there's no problem playing that with family. Yes. They, they get it. They've been indoctrinated into that world. This has a lot of core mechanics shared 100%. there, so it would be yeah. very a uh, step in. But then its quirks are not as, you know, they're intuitive. You know, <laughs> yes. I guess. <laughs> yes. So this is definitely one I have thought about a lot about bringing over, and I just having it we just have no that's not true we did bring we, it over we, it was in the bag once yeah it just didn't get to the to the table um so this is the game that inspired us to make this list and that is why it is in our number one spot yes yeah, so guys we want to hear from you like we mentioned earlier uh what are you guys playing what are you guys playing when you're with the family um what, what games are you dying to teach but you just think that it wouldn't work for some reason or another uh what's your what's your hurdle from uh, what's holding you back from being able to play it yeah we want to hear from you until then don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out and you can find us in all of these places you guys thanks for watching we will see you next time <laughs> bye, bye.